Hey guys, Sean here, Canadian Brewing Channel. Today's video, uh, I am gonna do a tasting at the end of it that's from the brew I just did, uh, if you watch my latest video. Uh, but what I'm also gonna do is a little bit of a turn on this channel for now. I wanna try and put out more videos. There's a lot of people at home <laughs> looking for something to watch. I hope you like my channel. Please subscribe if you do. Click the button if you wanna know when my next video comes out. But I digress. Um, it's gonna be on uh, things that we can grow at home so we can be you know, more self-sustainable at home, uh, bring our grocery bills down. Uh, and, and I'm gonna also go into, uh, I'm gonna touch on lactobacillus. Lactobacillus is a great uh, bacteria for fermenting with. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna touch on that and maybe I'll do some future videos if you guys wanna hear more about it, okay? So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. So today I thought it'd be a little bit different on the channel. I'm always talking about brewing beer, which is lots of fun. Uh, but there's other hobbies I have. I mean, I play guitar in a band, which I haven't done that for a while, but I also do things like uh, fermentation in other ways, like lactobacillus fermentation. I also uh, like to grow plants from seeds. I started doing that a little while ago. Started growing a garden about three years ago, and I've really enjoyed that. I really miss the growing season. I mean, I live in Southern Ontario, so we're not getting an all year round growing season. So yeah, I just start uh, talking a little bit that. Um, I'm gonna, I can do other videos on how to do the things I'm doing, but I just wanted to quickly give you an overview of what I've been working on so far. So things like uh, hot peppers, I'm really into hot peppers. I actually have uh, a Carolina Reaper plant uh, that I've been uh, uh, holding onto and growing for a while that I actually saved it um, out of the garden and then I was able to get some seeds to, to grow and here's, here's here he is right here and I've had to trim them back because I I actually put these in the ground or in underneath my grow light back probably I don't know <laughs> beginning of January I couldn't wait for the spring but I mean he's got little uh, buds and stuff and they do grow little peppers they're not obviously turning uh, color but this guy's gonna be ready to go that's a cal uh, I believe it's a Carolina Reaper um, if it's I believe it's a seed that came from the parent plant very very hot uh, I also have over here I've got another hot pepper plant I grew this one from seed and it's pretty damn big too and I've <laughs> I've had to trim these guys off as well um, I've got other ones in the back they're too big to bring up here but they've got peppers on them which is kind of cool right and I was just trying to keep them alive and maybe grow a few from seed for next year, well this year, and so I'm very excited about that. Um, I started a bunch of tomatoes and I bought tomato plants online, sorry, uh, the seeds online from all over the place. Uh, this one here, um, I forget the name of it, but it's a Russian t style tomato. It's supposed to be uh, black and red inside. And people say, well, I want to just go to the store and buy these things. Well, you know what? Every year I go to the store and I want to buy a specific tomato plant they don't have it what, what's up with that right you go there and it's like yeah last year I had these supersonic tomatoes and they go yeah I don't have any this year so now you're growing this other tomato that you don't even know how it's gonna do and last year I had a horrible tomato season and the tomato plants did not produce I mean I had lots of fruit uh, but they sorry didn't produce they did produce but the fruit wasn't very good some of them didn't produce at all some died off so this guy is about uh, I think he's two and a half weeks old I think and he's coming along well also this guy here this is a yellow pepper I got this from uh, buying uh, bell peppers uh, yellow bell peppers at the store and this one here I just took the seeds out of the bell pepper and I have a dehydrator I dehydrated them for uh, 24 hours at 100 degrees Fahrenheit don't want to go too hot or you'll kill them I planted it about I think three weeks ago and look at that I'm gonna have uh, yellow bell peppers I've also got some red ones and things like that going too. 
Uh, let's see, I've got, uh, I harvested some of these seeds from one of my hot pepper plants after I actually uh, dehydrated the pepper plants. This here is super hot <laughs> dried pepper, hot peppers. I've got, this is actually a roasted one and you can sprinkle this in soups or on a little bit of food. It's amazing. Um, this is one way that you can preserve food. I mean, that you can't eat this to be nutritionally surviving on it, but it's something you can preserve on your own and keep, all right? Uh, another thing I, ta I talked about is the uh, seeds I have, like I have red bell peppers, orange bell peppers. These are all from the store. Uh, more bell peppers, hot peppers, uh, acorn squash that I've saved. You can go buy these if you want uh, from the store. Uh, there's, and I'm gonna go into that probably more in detail about, uh, you know, heirloom, um, like heirloom, heirloom uh, seeds uh, versus hybrid seeds and, and all sorts of different uh, cross-pollinated seeds, what they mean. If you see an F1 or F2 or F3 on your package, what it means, we can get into that. But just, you know, being able to self-sufficient your, your seed uh, capture is, is awesome. Um, another thing I do is hot sauces, right? I love to make hot sauce. So all these hot sauces here have been canned. Um, these are not fermented. Um, so I did have to treat them uh, in, a, uh, in a canning uh, machine. And someone might say, well, why is the lid not on? Well, I can go in that detail at another time, but basically once, once you've sealed this and it's cooled off, you take the lid off so that you know that this seal is still prominent. Okay, and I'll go into details about that as well, but you should store them like this. So these are shelf stable probably for about a year or two, but I, I probably got about eight of these. I'm the only one who loves hot sauce, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, lactose fermentation. It, lactobacillus is a bacteria that produces acid, lactic acid, and acids help kill bacteria, basically. It kills off pretty much everything. Once uh, you get a pH below 4.6, things start to die off. And I find my lactobacillus fermentations usually drop down around 3.2. It's perfect, right? When you're going to get into fermentation with lactobacillus, you can purchase a kit like this. Uh, I got it from Amazon, it's kind of cool. It's like a starter kit. Comes with uh, a little recipe book. And it comes with a little guy here for crushing down everything into your jars. And if you've never fermented with lactobacillus before, when you hear the word fermentation, what are you producing? You're probably producing CO2, which is pressure. So if you were gonna ferment this in a jar, uh, this was fermentating with lactobacillus, you would need to have a way to get the pressure out. So some people just put the lid on loose and open it up and burp it every few days. You can also buy these. They're, they have a hole in the middle here. They go inside of the jar and they allow the, uh, the gases to, to come out. Another thing that comes with them too is these little glass pucks. Uh, whenever you're fermenting anything, you wanna make sure it stays below the surface so you don't get any mold growing. That's things that I'd have to go into detail about, but that's kind of a cool little kit. I just wanna explain that you can, uh, you can purchase on Amazon or you can buy all this stuff separately. So that's, you know, basically what I wanted to talk about here is there's going to be, I think on my channel, I'm going to start to add things into my garden too. Uh, I'm going to show you what I've learned on, on gardening. I watch a lot of gardening channels on YouTube. I've watched tons of beer channels on YouTube. And with my channel, I always want to try and take all the information that I absorb on the channels that I'm excited about and then put them into just simplest terms for you guys so that you don't have to go scoring the whole internet, which I've done on many occasions. And it's not until you've really sat and watched hundreds of videos that you can actually start to understand what you're watching and then go, yeah, that guy's misinformation, that's no good, or that guy's really great, I'm gonna make sure I subscribe to him. That takes a long time. Um, and anything I, I give forward to you guys, I'm trying to be um, as, as open as I can about what I know. If I don't know anything, I don't want to say it. Uh, there's a lot of people that speak out of the outside, out of their butt. I'm, I don't want to do that. Misinformation can be dangerous. 
Um, I'll try and put warnings on things when it comes to like fermentation that we are going to go into, but that is something um, I'm going to do earlier in the future. Uh, fermentation I can't do right now with my gardening because there is no garden, but you will see me in the future, probably in around July when I start to harvest, I'm going to start fermentation on some of my vegetables. I make my own pickles. Fermented pickles are amazing. It's one of my favorite things to do. Sauerkraut is pretty cool too. So. I think next part of the video is going to be what you've been waiting for is my latest beer in my tasting. So let's get my glass and I'm going to have myself some beer. Hey, welcome back. Got myself a beer. Um, this uh, beer I was trying to create was a Nipa New England IPA. Um, it's, it doesn't have as much nose as I was hoping for. I think it's because I might be a bit of a cheapskate when it comes to hops. I'm gonna have to start buying more of the hops that I like for dry hopping with uh, in pounds because three dollars or three dollars and fifty cents for an ounce of hops and then if you read some of these uh, IPA uh, recipes and you're throwing in 10, 12 ounces of hops that's getting expensive so um, this one has the Nipa look about it. It's very hazy. Um, I did not use um, any flaked uh, wheat, which a lot of IPAs will, but this one was done with Kvike yeast and it fermented in like three to four days. I think it's four days. Uh, the Kvike yeast is very, very quick. It's very strong. I, uh, I kept my fermenter at 90 degrees Fahrenheit the whole time. After the, the end of the very first 24 hours, I put in uh, my dry hop using Amarello. Um, it was a cryo, which is supposed to be equal to three ounces out of one, but I should have probably put three in there. I think next time as well, I might dry hop in also my, uh, my, my kegerator. I do have a screen to put that in. I find I do get more aroma that way. Uh, the head retention is good on it. Um, it, uh, it, it smells fine. It smells almost too clean though. It's almost like that fermented so well. And, and to ferment in four days, you'd think it'd be full of all sorts of esters. Uh -uh, there's not. So let's go for a dive in. Okay, so I did do a whirlpool, or actually it's, I'd call it a hop stand, at 170 degrees for about 30 minutes. And I used, um, I never used Magnum or Magnum before, so I, I put some Magnum in there. Uh, I also put some Simcoe in there. I was just throwing in some hops that I had hanging around as well. And there also is, I put, uh, I didn't have any Centennial for the bittering. So I did have some Cascade. So the, there's Cascade in here also for the bittering. So it has a nice mouth flavor and taste to it. But man, it really, goes off your palate and just leaves a little bit of a bitterness at the end. So it, it's pretty good. Now, from my experience, I've used Kvike yeast three times now. Um, this is the Voss blend. I actually prefer this blend better than the last one. I think it was Meter Garden. I can't remember what it was called, but this one gives less uh, tropical, tropical, uh, too much tropical fruit than the other one. This one's a little less, but it is, it is pretty good. It's pretty drinkable. Um, this one here I used all two row. I didn't use any pale malts. I did put some caramel 40 in it to give it that darker color. And sorry, I've lost my train of thought. As I was saying, Kvike yeast is so fast. It, uh, it, I, I, I started this on Monday and here we are, it's Sunday and I'm drinking it. So I find it takes it about another week in the keg, just sitting there to start to get the flavor profile profiles coming out a little bit more. Um, but it's a good thing that I was putting it in the keg uh, on Friday evening because the keg ran out Friday afternoon. So good timing. Yeah, good timing. Got 10 gallons of this stuff now. I don't have to worry about the, uh, the beer store is closing. I got lots of beer. I've got wine on the way too. Haven't done any videos on wine, but that's that's besides the fact. I like to make beer. So, um, 
has a bit of a orange peel pith in the background as well. It's about a um, 6% alcohol beer. I've got, I've got it a little high carbonated, probably about 3.5. So we got a bit of a bite to it. That's okay, I like, I like that. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I think the next time I do um, try for a NEPA, I may just go back and use uh, uh, probably a California ale yeast and uh, go from there. But uh, that's, that's what I have today, guys. I'm glad you guys have watched my videos. And let me know if you want me to put more out. I usually do one every other week. But everybody's in their uh, self-isolation right now and social distancing. Uh, right now I'm home with my family's here, but I got no one here beside me to uh, try tasting my beers. It's kind of a sad thing, but I, at least I can give this video out to you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, please subscribe and press the bell so you'll know when another one comes out. And I hope all is well for you guys and stay safe. Cheers.